Welcome to the Festival of Storytellers. can't tell you how excited I am to be on right now. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks of, of excitement, uh, getting prepared, and I've done a lot of things in my life, but this has got to be close to the top. Thank you. And Reed is magnet, and I thank you, John, for um, putting this forth and taking the chance on our authors in, in, uh, in presenting this out to, to the world. I, I've enjoyed this immensely, Joanne. Ellie, so have I. Thank you for, for who you are, and thank you, Reader's Magnet. You all are beautiful, and you've worked so very hard, and we are blessed. We, we are. are. I thank everybody that's involved with this process because we know writers need readers and writers need publishers. We thank Readers Magnet and everybody that's involved. I love Readers Magnet. They say, we share your stories with the world. Good afternoon. I'm Hadeen Dobbins Peck. I'm the author of Pony Ride to an Awakening, Journey of a Mystic. Here's a picture of my book. My book's available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. You may find it in your local bookstore. My book's a spiritual book. It's, it fits the genre of spirituality and philosophy and psychology. You know, I studied in my library the esoteric literature for many years. My spirit teachers let me know that I'd be writing a book. Well, after a few years, I enrolled in the University of Philosophical Research in Los Angeles. And in my studies, I was writing essays on psychology and religion and philosophy. And in my writing, I began to see how my book would transform. Now, it's interesting that in my studies, in my lifetime, I've read much esoteric literature. But what I didn't find was experience. So my book is partially autobiographical and partially informational. And I write about the experience that you might have in your spiritual journey. I write about my journey. I think that when you read my book, that you'll find things that you can resonate with, things that you've experienced or things that you've heard. I felt like making a contribution of a life of experience of a mystic would be helpful in this community of literature. I want to tell you a little bit about myself. You know, I'm a farm boy from Oklahoma here today we're filming at my lake home in lake spavana oklahoma the seasons are changing the, the colors are changing i'd like to thank readers magnet for this opportunity to broadcast and thank you for listening today i want to tell you a little bit about my book you know my book includes a guideline to meditation also includes an appendix with recommended reading that you can pursue your own study. I know that in my writing, the, the first chapter of my book was about my early childhood on the farm. You know, like many farm families, we went to the nearest church, which in my case was a 
Protestant church. And in my early childhood and, and, and time at home, I had an orientation to Christianity. Now, I can say that I certainly learned the Bible forward and backwards, and it's been a valuable asset in my life. I had a little struggle with the, some of the judgment that was presented in the Christian teachings. I felt like that on the farm, close to nature, I felt connected to the universe. And I felt like my God was a loving God. And I didn't feel like that my God was wrathful or vengeful. And so I had a little difficulty with the concept of the wrath of God and being born a sinner and things like that. I felt closer to nature and I felt like God was within me. So in my chapter one of my book, I'm writing about my early childhood on the farm and my orientation to Christianity. As I move on to chapter two, I write about an experience I had as a teenager, a, a young teenager, 13 as a matter of fact. I was riding horseback through the meadow and I experienced ecstasy and I received a message from the divine that God coexists with all existence. You know, it, it makes sense that as we evolve from mineral to plant to animal to human, that all of our creations are related. We're all one. It, it kind of makes me think that my animals and trees are my younger brothers and sisters, that we're all evolving. The evolution continues. And that is my opinion, that evolution goes forward and not backwards. So, you know, from that point of view, I think we'll be born again as a human. It's hard for me to phantom going backwards and being born an animal because evolution goes forward, not backwards. I think you'll find in my chapter one and chapter two, some information about my early life that was a turning point for me. I know that as I was riding my pony across the meadow and experiencing ecstasy, I realized that there's a non-duality in my thinking. It wasn't present in my thinking, but it, it was introduced to me at that time. A non-duality that God and man coexist and that we're one. I know that in the Abrahamic religions, Islam, Judaism, Christianity, they more follow the idea of a duality, separation, where God and man are separate. And it's more comfortable for me to think in the Eastern philosophy of a non-duality that we are all one. I give you that background in my writing to lead you to where I am more in my current life. I know that as I continue in my book, I get to chapter three where I write about spiritual experiences. And we all, we've all heard about spiritual experiences and we've had some spiritual experiences. I know that some people have a near death experience and maybe they experience um, the divine or spirit. Others sometimes have a dark night of the soul experience. You know, the dark night of the soul experience is the wake up call sometimes for us. If we're a little hard headed, we have to have that too before on our forehead. It's the dark night of the soul experience that brings us to our knees, that we reach the bottom and our ego's not helping and our brain's not helping and our body's not helping. And in our surrender, we reach up and ask the divine for help. Well, in that reaching and in that surrender and in that asking, we form a new relationship with the divine. And that new relationship continues for the remainder of our lives. It's interesting that in the dark night of the soul experience, our ego diminishes and it gets moved over to second place. Instead of first place, it's second place. Our relationship with the divine is first. 
and our relationship with ego is second. And that's a, a learning, an awakening to surrender our ego mind and, and um, uh, endorse the relationship we have with God and with the spirit. I know that in chapter three, I talked about some spiritual experiences that we have. I mean, how many of us have thought of someone and the phone rang and it's them on the phone. Well, thought travels faster than light. Possibly we were thinking of them and they picked up on our thought and picked up the phone and called us. Or maybe we're thinking of someone and they're about to call and we answer the phone and it's them. Other people have spiritual experiences. Maybe you heard grandma talking about Papa standing at the foot of the bed one morning. Well, you know, spirit is as close to us as our breath and spiritual experiences are pretty normal in life. I encourage you to trust those experiences and, and, and trust spirit. You know, we're in physical form about 75 years and we're in spirit seven or 800 years. So we're spiritual beings and our physical body is part of our spiritual body. I go on to, to write in chapter four about finding the light. And, and in the Bible it says, in the beginning, darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. I find that the holy dogma is, is enriched with wisdom. I'm an omniist. I, I honor wisdom and truth in all of the various forms and all the various religions of the world. And I encourage you to honor that wisdom as well. <coughs> now in my writing, my, uh, I thought I would include in this book a chapter on our spiritual senses. You know, we have spiritual gifts. Some of us are clairaudient. I'm clairaudient. Some people are clairvoyant. Some people are clairsentient. Some people are claircognizant. We have six spiritual senses, just like we have six regular senses. I know claircognizant is the idea of, of just knowing, uh, not knowing how you know, but you just know it's, it's, a, it's a cognition. So, in chapter four, when I write about spiritual gifts, I, I write about our spiritual senses. Now, also in chapter four, I write about our invisible bodies. You know, we have an aura around us. You know, our aura is made up of many colors. There are seven planes of existence. And those planes show up as our aura. You know, our physical body is the center of our aura. And then we have the etheric, astral, mental, and so forth, different bodies that surround us. Well, chapter four, I talk about our spiritual gifts and I talk about our invisible bodies, giving you kind of an orientation to spirituality. I know that I felt important to write in this book, chapter five, about the abuse of spirit. Some of you have had experience where you've gone to church or, or been with someone, a spiritual leader, and maybe they embarrassed you or maybe ask you to not listen to your inner voice and your intuition because it might be the devil. Well, our spiritual leaders can be abusive if they try to control us too much and, and, and try to um, ask us not to trust ourselves. Well, when it comes to intuition, that is our higher self talking to us. And I think we should trust our intuition. In fact, I would go so far as to say that the, the doorway to enlightenment begins with trusting ourselves, listening to our inner intuition, our inner voice, our higher self. I continue in my book. And I wrote a chapter about my dark night of the soul experience in my 
early 40s. I had a dark night of the soul experience. It was a shamanic initiation, and this experience lasted four years. In my case, I was hearing voices and um, having a bit of a psychotic experience. You know, the medical community doesn't really understand spiritual emergencies. But spiritual emergencies happen when we have a sometimes a dark night of the soul experience. And I know in my case it was a shamanic initiation that lasted four years. But it was an opportunity for my ego to be surrendered and for me to join, form a new relationship with the divine. I share that with you. Some of you may have had dark night of the soul experience. Maybe you've lost a partner or, or a child, or maybe you've had a serious illness. Many things can bring us to our knees, but when we're on the floor and we have no place to turn, we reach up and ask God for help, and that's when we form a new relationship. I know that it was important to me in my writing to share with you some of the interaction I have with spirit. I know that in my day-to-day -day -day walk, I practice 24-hour day meditation. I practice mindfulness. And I'm always listening. I keep my mind empty. I'm always listening, listening to my spirit teachers, listening to my ancestors. And I know in my early 40s, I had that dark night of the soul experience, but it was the the studies that I had done and the faith that I had that carried me through that dark night experience. I had tremendous faith and I believed that it would all come out to the better at the other end. Well, in my next chapter, I write about my experience with spirit teachers. You know, I ask the question, I get the answer. I know as a shaman, I can go into trance and come back with an answer, but I've learned just to ask question and listen and get the answer. You know that um, sometimes I use an intuitive reader. I'm not clairvoyant, I'm clairauditory, so I get the verbiage, the phrases, the sentences into my consciousness, but I don't get the visual. So I write about having some readings with a spiritual intuitive reader and she shares with me the visions that my teachers show her. For example, there was one reading, and she shared with me that my spirit teacher appeared as a teacher in the classroom. Well, I know that at night when I sleep, I leave my body and I enter into the astral plane, and I'm in school at night. And, and I, I'm working with my spirit teachers. And then my spirit returns to the body in the morning. And when I wake up, I think this is true for all of us. I think that we slip out of our body at night and we work on the astral plane. Well, my intuitive reader was telling me that my teacher appeared in the vision as a teacher in the classroom. And the teacher appeared as an owl. Well, he was wearing a mortise board and a robe and... And that was very appropriate because I know that in symbolism, the owl represents wisdom. And I know that, that my teachers are very wise. As a matter of fact, my spirit teacher is Josephus. You may know that name. If not, you can Google Josephus and you can find out about his history. He was a first century Roman, a religious historian. I go on to write another chapter and I wrote something about Buddhism. Now, Buddhism is not a religion, it's a practice. Buddha basically had four teachings. Life is suffering, there's a cause of suffering, there's a cure for suffering. And then he recommended the Eightfold Path. Well, I practiced the Eightfold Path, you know, right speech, right thoughts, right concentration, right occupation. You know, these are very helpful practices to follow to organize our mind and our thoughts and our actions. It helps lead us to enlightenment. I put this in the book for your information because you may not be aware of those teachings. I know that I continue in my writing 
And I wrote a chapter about silence, about meditation and about silence. And God is silent. How do we enter into the silence? Well, we clear the mind. Well, there's different ways of clearing the mind. I know meditation is a helpful way. Some people tell me they have trouble meditating. They can't clear the mind. Well, have you tried running or dancing? When your body's active dan in dance or running, it seems like your mind is clear and you can listen to your voice of your ancestors and your teachers and you can get messages when you're active. You can even find this meditative space taking a shower or washing dishes. So in my chapter on silence, I offer some advice on how to quiet the mind and listen to the, the voice of your ancestors and teachers. I'm seeing a question posed. Let me get my glasses. Someone asked, the book's such a great eye opener. How are you dealing with your spiritual, with our spiritual minds? You know, I do personal coaching, spiritual counseling. I give local talks. I have a YouTube channel. You can hear some of my talks on my YouTube channel under my name. And I have some links on my website, PonyRideToAnAwakening.com. And you can listen to some of my talks. I encourage people to think about spirituality I mean, after all, at some point in our life, we, we wake up and we maybe our life's not going the way we want, or maybe we've got financial issues or marital issues. Well, it's my take that we can awaken. Maybe we're questioning our life and it's time to start over. It's not working out. We want a new beginning. It's my philosophy that we can awaken and awakening begins, but awakening never ends. It's a continuous process. My One of my intuitive spirit teachers told me, Dean, your soul's 12,567 years old. Well, since I believe that I've lived for eons, I had to think about that. What is 12,567 years? Well, maybe that's how long I've been awake. Maybe that's about 10 lifetimes. Well, awakening continues and continues and continues until we reach enlightenment. I, I uh, honor all of the wisdom that the world could bestow upon me. When I was a young man, I was kind of frustrated with my Christian orientation, and I wanted more wisdom. In fact, I wanted all the wisdom that the world could bestow upon me. That's why I studied all of the world religions. I studied the tarot and numerology and astrology and, and really wanted a foundation, a, a, a foundation of wisdom and principles and morals and ethics to live my life. You know, each day we, we study some esoteric literature and we program our subconscious mind. And then tomorrow, the ideas and thoughts filter down from our subconscious mind into our awareness. And that gives us our guiding principles and actions and words. So every day, putting something up there, making a deposit, and then the next day, making a withdrawal. That's how we prepare ourselves mentally to, to have a positive life. I know that uh, in my book, I put an appendix with five recommended reading lists, foundational, intermediate, all the way up to advanced. Please keep this book in your library as a resource. I have a glossary. It's a great resource book for a spiritual seeker. Let me show you my book. This is Pony Ride to an Awakening, Journey of a Mystic. It's available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. And I appreciate you buying my book and listening to my broadcast today. My book's available in audio, it's available in ebook, 
hardback, softback. And just for your information, I've had this book translated into five languages. The Italian, Portuguese, and Serbian have published. The Spanish book is at the publisher. And the French book is currently being edited. They will all be in print by the end of the year. You, you see, as a spiritual elder, I felt it was important to give something back. You know, the wisdom came to me for free. I'm giving it back out to you. I hope that my book will find its way to the university, to the classroom, to the library, and to your personal library. I appreciate you listening to this broadcast, and I want to thank Reader's Magnet for hosting. Again, here's my book, Pony Rides and Awakening, Journey of a Mystic. You can find my website at PonyRidesAndAwakening.com. I have links to my YouTube channel. I have links where you can buy my book. And I believe I have links there to my foreign books. I say in my preface that you may have to read this book more than once. Something interesting about spiritual writing is that much of the writing is intuitive. The reader will have to read the sentence and use their intuition to get the message. So my book's something to read and think about. Use your intuition to find your own message. And I hope something in here will resonate with you. Thank you. I run out of words, so 